Hello, and welcome to Crack the Cred, the show that takes the mystery out of cracking passwords or finding ways around them. I'm your host, Dana Epp, and in today's episode, we're gonna talk about how you can get the domain administrator's credentials. Now, this isn't something that you should take lightly because we're about to modify a domain controller. Doing so incorrectly could compromise the domain controller or make it unusable. So make sure you do this very, very carefully and only when you really need to do so, such as having to seize a domain controller after an administrator has left or has changed the password on you. Now, this is gonna be a very interesting presentation because this is definitely not a Microsoft approved methodology. However, it will work. So let's make sure we do this right and let's take this slowly so we can get it done. First thing you need to understand is that all we really need to do here is find an ability to change the password for the administrator. Now, that would seem very, very difficult if we don't actually have the administrative credentials, but there's a small loophole in Windows Server that we can take advantage of that would allow us to do this. It all comes down to how things work at the console when you need to log in. There is something called Utility Manager that gives us the capability to be able to access and do some interesting things at login. And in our case, we're gonna use that to our advantage to allow us to do something a little more, uh, well, interesting. So here's what's gonna happen. What we can do is simply take the standard installation media of that operating system, such as Windows Server 2008 or R2, and put it into the server. If we reboot the server and catch that, and go into the install mode, we can do something interesting here. Now, in our last episode, we talked about using Dart to do it. And you could use that same media to get to the recovery mode. But in this particular case, we're just gonna use the standard installation media. Once we get to the install now screen, we'll simply click on the bottom left corner where it says repair your computer. When we click to repair the computer, we'll select the operating system that we see there, and then we'll simply click next. Going there gives us the system recovery options, and the one on the bottom that we can utilize is the command prompt. By simply popping up the command prompt, we now have the ability to traverse the file system and do something interesting. In our case, we're simply going to change directory into c colon backslash windows backslash system32, and we're going to move the utilman.exe to utilman.exe.old. The next thing we're going to do is copy command.exe to utilman.exe. And now reboot. As it posts and comes back up and we get to that initial login screen, we're gonna make one little change. We're simply gonna hit the Windows key and hit U and we're gonna get ourselves a command prompt. Now, that command prompt's not just running as a normal user, it's actually running as system. At this point, all we need to do is type net space user space administrator and some password. That password is the new password to log in. Now, simply minimize the command window, type in that new password, and we're in. That's all it takes. Now, remember, once we're in as that administrator, we're gonna wanna make sure that we go back and delete that utilman.exe and put back utilman.exe.old to the original. This way, no one else can do that, and well, we just don't wanna leave any mess behind. Now, a couple things to consider. Lots of people I talk to in the field wonder why I always demand that we use BitLocker on our domain controllers. This is the reason why. It becomes far too easy for people to be able to simply do something like this and be able to gain administrative control of the domain controller. Now, if you don't have BitLocker as something that you can utilize on your domain controller, make sure that this is in a physically secured location. It should be in a cage that can't be accessed easily and then put somewhere in the data center so that no one has physical access to it unless you need to. So there you have it. Very simple, very easy, and it works every time. This is the way to get into a domain controller and change the administrative credentials. Don't take it lightly. Make sure you're only doing this when you have to. But if you need it, 